let's do some podcasting. Love that. <laughs> Hello and welcome to In The Pocket, the bass guitar podcast where we get the lowdown on the low end. My name's Johnny, a totally average bass player, and each week I'm joined by a different co-host to talk all about that bass. Whew! So this week I am very lucky to be joined by incredibly talented theatre and session bassist, double bassist, synth bassist, anything with the word bass in it, bassist. Mealy Trail. Hello. How the flip are you? I'm going to say flip because, you know, we're, we're going to set the standards. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing all good. Thank you very much. How are you? Amazing. Yeah. Not too bad. Thank you. Not too bad. All the better for being here now. So <laughs> I, I I wanted to get you on the podcast because we've not had uh, someone with your kind of background before of performing because for those that don't know, Really, you're you're mainly working in the theatre industry, right? Yeah. So my main thing, my main squeeze, as you say, the thing that I love to do is theatre, um, and like pit band stuff and all that kind of thing. Um, like I'm I'm a reader. I I read music. That's my main thing. But saying that, I absolutely love doing pop work and working with artists and bands just as much. It just seems to be the phone rings more with theatre stuff. So that's mm. kind of where I found myself. Absolutely. That's where the, the, the nine to five is, or, or probably very much not nine to five. It's probably not nine to five. Probably, <laughs> probably five. It's probably five to nine. <laughs> the other way yeah, around. Five to 11. <laughs> yeah. Oh gosh. But you know, all, all worth it. And it's all good fun. So you've been, you know, professional with it now for, this is your first year, we were saying before we hit that record button. So congratulations. Yeah, so... That's amazing. It's been good. I didn't expect to be fully professional within a year. I expected to still be, you know, working at a coffee shop or still working at a pub or <laughs> making lanyards was my side job when I first finished uni. Wow. Um, but no, wow. I managed to actually get rid of that pretty quickly and go on tour with Calabro was my first like big job, as you'd say, where it was like full time. And then I started bringing it on two weeks later um, in London, a musical theatre show. So that kind of set me up quite nicely for when they finished I could then freelance and job around and be able to afford to do that without having to go back to making lanyards <laughs> <laughs> well you're so you're going on tour and be like here's a lanyard here's a lanyard here's our tour <laughs> or, lanyards everybody well the tour lanyards that did arrive I had the company I worked for had actually made <laughs> which was quite funny they arrived and I went I know who made that <laughs> you're like oh this is the uh premium quality one this one they're treating us they spent a lot of money on these ones <laughs> amazing cool so every uh time we get a co-host on here we like to ask three simple questions uh quick fire i say quick fire they're not normally quick fire but be as quick or as long as you want with okay. these. um so the first one is just so people can get to know you a bit better um is the th- what three words would you use to describe your bass play oh um average no oh <laughs> come on that's that's my line <laughs> uh musical theater nerd there you go three oh, words nice. <laughs> nice. absolutely so what you know in terms of bass what do you think makes the bass lines of musical theater stand out compared to like uh to other genres or like pop what you're used to doing well i think with theater is it's every genre and that's what makes it interesting because people always go, oh, but you're doing the same show every night. And I'm like, if you're on tour with Dua Lipa, you're doing the same show every yeah, night. Every band doing that? Yeah, I was like, is there's no difference just because I'm sat in a pit reading music. And, you know, you have one like big swing number and you're on upright bass doing loads of pit stuff. And then there's the classical ballad and you've got your bow out and you're doing like orchestral arco. And then suddenly there's a really funky tune and you're suddenly like, you know, bass guitar having a blast of a time, then you can get a synth bass out and start playing that. And then you've got the fretless out. Like that can be all in one show. Yeah. And before, like, that is so rewarding when you can just do all of it in one go because you don't necessarily have that on a pop gig. You could, you know, a bit of bass guitar, a bit of synth bass. And, like, that that's the job and you're doing the same set every night. And this Absolutely. is like, then you've got Motown song and then you've got this and then you've got that. And it's just, it's brilliant. It's, I love it. But some people hate it. 
because you can have the cheesy, happy, clappy songs. But I think they're great. You can really but play with fun, them. They're fun, aren't they? You know, and that's really yeah. those kind of songs <laughs> where the bass is just so essential. I mean, it's essential oh. in every song, but well, that's what everyone's moving and dancing to on yeah. stage. You know, those it's moments. They're so reliant on you, and you you kind of forget like you're in like what you would call a vamp. So it's where you're repeating two bars um or three or one bar heart like repeating a motif and the conductor is holding you on this and you're repeating repeating and they're chatting up there or or, like up on the stairs up there it's like if you're in a pit they're above you and then they will signal you out and the actors are relying on you to carry on like they're Mm. chatting 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 and then you get signaled out and then you start the next section of the song they start singing if you don't start they're, they're gonna look a little bit silly like you've got to be on it and yeah so actually you know if anything every every show isn't necessarily the same because if someone fluffs up a line or there's a bit of an improv in there you might have you might have to keep going or do something a different lead into it or different um, yeah exactly it so depends on the show because some shows very much are on the dots and it's like you play exactly what's written because everything is so written so specifically and so amazingly and then sometimes there's loads of slashes and so every night you can just play with these different slashes and go oh, I'm going to try this pentatonic today. Oh, maybe yeah. I'm going to try this today and ha- like jam out and have fun. And like you do a good fill and the drummer's like, oh, I love that one. <laughs> and you have a relationship with the whole band. Yeah, so really that's fun. really cool. That's awesome. I imagine, you know, you're not, although on tour you're with the same band, it's kind of you're on different tours, you'll be, d- be different musicians. So you're kind of learning yeah, and so picking up from everyone on the tour. At the moment, I mean, I've played with so many different people in the past two months since my tour got cancelled because I'm just going into other shows and just doing a few days and then going off because the bassist was taking a holiday. And then you're yeah. meeting and playing with all these different people and creating this like huge network, um, which is amazing. Yeah, I love it. well, what a way <laughs> to like kickstart your, you know, your career, and it? it's it's incredible to see. Um, Thank so you. The next question. Um, is now I you know I'm very jealous of your your suites of low end machines that you've got there. <laughs> your um, it's just very nice bases, everyone. Um, but which <laughs> one? I, I think I might know the answer, but which one would you say is your number one base? Oh, uh, so my number one favorite in general is my five string 1989 Stingray, hundred percent. Because I've always loved stingrays, and I'm not saying that because I'm endorsed. I always loved stingrays before I got endorsed by well, them. I mean, that's that's um, why you, that's why, why they, you became you know, endorsed. You know, <laughs> they approached me because they saw that literally every single Instagram video was either me or my four string stingray or my five string stingray. Um, for musical theatre work, my absolute baby is my custom over water. It does the job. It sounds amazing. It's I like it's beautiful. They this handmade, made to order. I spect everything. Like oh, I like put hours in with the guys to like make it for me and what I want in the instrument. So for work, over water, for just general, I love this instrument. My five string stingray, hundred percent. Oh, incredible! I'm I'm so jealous of both of those. The stingray in particular was the one, the first one that I saw that was like, mm. oh my god! And I'm primarily a four string guy. Um, yeah, I kind of swap out five strings now and then. Um, but when I saw that, I was like yeah okay i'm gonna need a five string sting right now <laughs> i've got <laughs> my four strings also fun. like i love it i got that new in like 2016 i like works that you know after gcse's or like that whole summer in a coffee shop for like four pounds an hour or something ridiculous and like literally just like worked so hard and earned the money and went and bought it like brand new at the shop oh. on gcse results day i remember it wow. and i was like because all I had was like a Fender modern jazz player that I'd played since the start. So this was like my yeah. first big, it like, and it cost me a fortune. And it, that's like my baby. I love it. But I, ha- I never really have use for four strings. I always want that fifth string. So yeah, I love well, it. It's, Brilliant it's bass. But... Happy, isn't it? To fill mm. out that low end even more when you need to. And uh, yeah, five yeah. string can, can be played totally different to a four, I find. Or the way that your hand extends or where it's going to go. Yeah. The decisions are totally different. Mm. Um, yeah oh incredible well I'm gonna you know leave this podcast being very I've, I think deflated because I'll be very jealous but no <laughs> it's amazing it's amazing right. yeah <laughs> well I, I had one I had one but um I stupidly sold it um to get my GNL um which mm. will be up for sale soon so I'm getting to get another stingray but we'll talk more about stingrays later because I got a lot to say yes I, yeah, there's a lot of new stingray stuff coming out um... mm, spoil, spoilers everybody <laughs> um so the last question and uh is 
very simply, why, why the bass? Why did you pick up the bass for the first time? So when I was four or five, my next door neighbor played guitar and I just went to my mum and I was like, I want to be cool like that. I want to play guitar. <laughs> Um, and my mum was like, okay, like if you want to, like, let's, let's get you playing a musical instrument. Cause I was from a very musical background. My grandfather did a lot in the classical music in London with the LSO and stuff. So they wanted me to learn, but they didn't want me to like push me in any way. So when it came from me, they were like, yeah, great play guitar. So I started on classical guitar age five, had lessons right up until I was 18. But when I went secondary school, age 11, I was like, mm, classical music's a bit boring. I want to play electric guitar. And the head of music was like, we don't have a single bassist. And I was like, okay. And then I literally, we were like, okay, cool. Went and bought that little uh, Squire Bronco bass because I was yeah. so small. I was like just <laughs> tiny and it looks huge even then. And it's like a three quarter size or smaller, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and I played that at 11 and then I, yeah, that was it. I didn't really, I carried on with guitar until I got to my grade eight. But as soon as I passed my grade eight, I was like, cool, we're done. That's I'm just done. there and exists. But yeah, no, it's always been since when I started bass, I was like, this is this is it, this is what I want to do. Yeah, um, I think, that, and then I specialised in it. Incredible. Well, you know, that's it, it's a similar story with a lot of people. I think when you get to secondary school, and then mm. you meet all these other guitarists or something, and then they need somebody to 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 do it. But people are like, oh yeah, I'll I'll just do the bass, I guess. But actually. I think mm. it's, a ble- it's a blessing, that thing. It's a blessing, um... and you don't realise at the time. Like, I was at an all-girls school, so it was even more rare to have musicians full stop. And oh. the head of music is one of my best friend's dads. So like, I was still in contact with him, and I do owe him a lot, because if he wouldn't have said that, I probably would have just played electric guitar, and maybe I would have been a bit like, mm, and, you know, not carried on. But the encouragement from that school, and they did, like, band workshops and all this stuff. It's just amazing. It was, like, absolutely perfect for me. Um, and so, yeah, that that was like the the changing moment or defining moment was when I started secondary school. But I had a head start because I could read music, because I could play guitar. Sure. I was just like, it was like, and go. Yeah, and you I had started. the fundamentals down already. Yeah. And how it worked and, you know. It probably... I wasn't going, oh, what's this? What's an E string? It was like, okay, I'm missing two strings and it's about groove now. What's groove? It was yeah. more that. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it's so interesting. Like when people are like, "Well, there's two less strengths." I'm sure that's just an easier thing. You're like, no, it's, it's totally different the way that you about note it. placement. Oh god, yeah, the note yeah. placement is still the bane of my life. So <laughs> it's the bane <laughs> of my life. Years later, like... it's the bane of mine because I'm like struggling, struggling to even keep up and, and play right. <laughs> <laughs> amazing cool thank you so much it's really interesting to hear you know how you got into it and now moving into your professional career as career career as well <laughs> so, amazing let's move on to our first question <laughs> so our first question oh by the way questions at Johnny Dibble on Instagram. That's where I put on my poll. That is where you can get involved and submit your questions for this very podcast. The first one comes from Louis Valencourt, who has asked, uh, what is better to buy long-term, combo or head and cap? Now, I thought this was an interesting question. And really, I think the answer is very much, it depends. Um, it depends on your situation and also the kind of gigs that you are going to. Um, now, really, we'll talk a lot more about bases later on, but what, what's your amp set up at the minute? I don't situation? use amp. There, I well, used well, I digital go. because it's theatre, yeah. DIs. So uh, actually for me, they say that, I go, mm, amp, HX yeah. it. Uh, yeah, what is like, that? Oh, yeah. You get an HX, like th- that has been the biggest game changer for me is an HX. I've got, I mean, I've amp wise. I'm, that's the one thing I'm not a nerd about is amps. I do a mm. bit like, and the well, I've had the same amp since I was about 15. It's a TC electronic combo. It's got a DI out. It has done me so well. So I don't feel the need to get another one. I'd yeah. like to get a head and cab, like a one by 10, an Aguila or something just to have, to have a ni- really nice amp. But for me, I don't know with theatre when I'd use it. Yeah, but you don't want that loud digital. stage noise. Yeah, um, yeah, no, it's all like through a volume pedal. Literally, it's tuning pedal, HX, 
and anything that I'm running through the HX that are doing the computer, volume yeah. pedal out. And that Four does years. me so well. So, I mean, I'd say buy a head and a cab, a small one, mm. if I was yeah. going to do it. I, I'm a head and a cab guy, um, but I'm playing like originals bands in dirty venues um, mm. with like a three band bill, you know. Yeah, uh, so, it, so you need the oomph. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you need that oomph. Um, you need to not always rely on the PA as well, because sometimes mm. you'll turn up to an absolute dive that, what's a DI? You know, and they're like, oh, for goodness sake, here we go. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I've got to have that back line ready just mm. in case. Um, and, yeah. you know, a combo could do that. But if, you know, for me, if I'm going out on tour with my band or something or any band and we're using someone else's backline, then I need to be able to have a head that I can quickly put on stage, plug it into the cab, you know, that I'm borrowing mm. someone else's cab or their supply and, and run mm. through that. Um, yeah. Whereas if I'm, if I'm taking a combo, I'm going to have to let other bands use this combo. They're going to mm. maybe dial different settings you know it's not ideal so i think it really depends on what your situation i think it does completely it's gonna be yeah. if i if i was just in say i'm in a, in a wedding band or a functions band i think i think i'd get a combo just because mm. it's just all in one then there's one thing and maybe like a 210 or something um yeah and then you know, di where i can maybe um and i've got an hx stomp as well you know so i can mm. use that where I, where i need to um and then just have that volume behind me a little bit maybe but yeah i i kind of feel like it depends and think about your situation also your yeah. transport situation because not everyone can fit like can't fit a ampeg svt 810 in the back of your car all the time. well that's the so, thing uh, isn't it it's like you've got to think about what can you fit in the car and for me if i'm doing a full rig in terms of double bass as well I've got to get that double bass in the car, let alone an amp and a head. So that's where my little pedal board with just the tuner and the HX and the volume pedal off the side is brilliant because it's just one tiny pedal train hard case, doink, in the car. That's yeah. my electronic setup. Yeah, done. literally done. Yeah, yeah. tick. That's why, I, that's why I love the idea of having everything all in one. Like I was going to go down the rack mount route at one point or I was going to get like – a tiny head that can go on my pedal board or just a power mm. amp to power a cab from the HX Stomp, you know, and all, all this type of thing. Um, because I love the idea of just being able to have your base and one thing that you need to take with you. And, and what really I used like... to do that I love and I still use for any pop stuff I do is my Sans amp. Mm -hmm. It's my favorite. That and the Stingray, I think, is a Oh, my God. Pair. That's the combination um yeah. i always go back to a sans amp um mm -hmm. i've had several now uh because i get it and it's you know obviously the one of the best pedals ever um yeah. so classic so like clean and just punchy and it does oh, this high high it. mid scoop that it does which like you say fits a stingray it's perfectly. Just... <laughs> um, and for me being like a rock guy with a pick it's synonymous with that sound yeah with, with like the ampeg tone as well the svt mm. you know oh, insane anyway oh, oh, i'm getting all hot and flustered um <laughs> about sans amps um so then but then i go i get a bit bored i get for basis fatigue as i call it um yeah and then i yeah. go and buy like a dark glass and then i'll sell the sans amp and then i'll be like oh no now i want another one and I'll, I'll, I'll always keep doing that so i don't I've have always one wanted them, a dark glass actually that's one thing i oh, haven't yeah. had yeah, um, yeah they're they're good it depends what you're looking for i think because they've mm, got you know such a big range but yeah when yeah. i was in a rock band that's all i wanted i was in a rock band at college and i was using my sans app and my p bass and i put like yeah. really good pick up seymour duncan's in them i was like oh, with a yeah. pick i was loving life and i was like oh i really want dark glass distortion but they're like so expensive when you're working at a pub for like five pounds an hour like yeah. how many hours it would take you to earn it? it just I couldn't I couldn't I couldn't afford one pedal for that price and I had the sans amp so I just went with it yeah it's wild isn't it well you've kind of got one now haven't you in, in the HX stomp oh and yeah got... exactly I can <laughs> fiddle for days with that that is, is a bit of a minefield that HX stomp and you can almost go too far so I actually go very simple with Good my idea. overwater because I spent so much money on the electronics it's got the Johnny's Uni Pre in built into the base and you can go really nerdy, but you can take the back plate off the base and you can select the frequencies you're boosting and cutting wow. on the front from the back with these little wheels. So I just run a compressor. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's bring it. I think for bring it on, I had 
I clicked a uh, EQ for the slap bass solve just to make it sparkle and to boost it volume wise because they wanted more volume for that one to stick out. Um, but other than that, just compressor. Not even an EQ, only EQ for the slap song. I did it all on the actual instrument. I thought, why yeah, not? That, I think you can sometimes go overboard with preamps. Yeah. Um, I did a video on like the top five pedals you need on your pedal board. Um, mm. And, you know, one of those was, a, I was just going off my own what I like. <laughs> and one mm. of those was a preamp. And I was talking about Sans Amp. And I replied to a comment yesterday on that video. And somebody was saying like, well, I've got uh, my sires active. So do I need a preamp? And I was like, hmm. Not, not really, because sometimes you yeah. can you can muddy that tone so much that it's losing that crispness a bit. So yeah, exactly. I didn't want to lose EQ. all the nice stuff that I've kind of you know spec to put in it. Yeah. I didn't want to just like suck all the life out of it and then put life back in. I thought, you know what, yeah. I want it. I want it to sound like the overwater, so I'm just going to compress it. That's it. Yeah, and it did right. me loads of favors. People loved it, so I was like, right, cool. That's that's what I'm going to do from now on. Just compression. Yeah, <laughs> like it works. <laughs> Sometimes when you've got all these options as well, you start going into like, oh, well, this isn't right. So this must, I must have to twiddle this treble knob. Oh no, now I can twiddle this yeah. on the bass. You know, if you've got option overload, it can be limiting sometimes, mm. ironically. Yeah. That's how I always find it. anyway. Cool. Well, a huge tangent on that question. So who knows yeah. if we answered it? Who knows? But, you know. We said it depends on the situation. Yeah. <laughs> we'll just answer that the same answers for every question. It depends, <laughs> mate. It's fine. And then just go off and talk about whatever we want to. <laughs> Amazing. Cool. Let's move on to our next segment. So our next segment is the news. If I had some paper around here, I'd give it a good rustle like a, a proper news anchor. Um, oh, I got, I haven't got, oh, I've got some paper. Here we go. Oh, here we go. Da, 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 da. There you go. Tonight <laughs> on in the, in the Pocket News. Um, <laughs> so it is a huge week for news. There's so much that's come out. Um, so I feel like we could spend a long time talking about this. So I'm going to try and we'll try and speed through it. So we've okay. got a lot to get through. Um, so first up, Thunder, big release, the Meteora in the Player Plus range they have released. So if you haven't seen the Meteora before, a couple of years ago, might have been like 2020, they dropped the Meteora guitar. It's an, based on an old shape, I think. And it's, go and have a look. It's ha really hard to describe. It's almost like an offset Jaguar, but with more pointed edges that's been like skewed a bit more. It, they've got it now in some of the new like fade finishes that they've got Ooh, on, the, nice. on the player plus range so like the the blue to the white or the i think they've got the red one as well they're like red to yellow that looks like a flame they've got it in i think it's a blue an orange and uh my favorite is probably the silver burst and i used to hate Ooh. silver burst but that that thing looks good with a maple neck yeah, on it. We like that silver burst. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. I'm, I've, I feel like I've matured now. <laughs> um, <laughs> so yeah, these are really cool. Uh, of course, they are like in the thousand pound range because they are uh, in the Player Plus, which mm. arrived earlier in or late 2021. So a bit out of some people's price ranges, but it's a really cool novelty thing that I don't think will be around forever these ones depending on how mm. they sell but i think if you if you dig these and you think i'm going to get this and i want to keep it for a long time i would try and snap one up because i don't see them being in production for too long yeah i feel like in of... 50 years when you retire and you think oh, i need a bit more money oh sell that base oh, that was yeah it. and then it, bingo exactly these 20 it, year olds are like where are these bases i want one <laughs> exactly they'll be like the gibson ripper of today i'm like yeah. oh my god like the holy grail oh my god let's get one of these you know <laughs> I, I think they really will be worth quite a lot of money um even though they're not like the highest ultra fender range you know i think that's what i'm relying on with my four string stinger i've had it from new and i've kept it really nice and i'm thinking mm. well it's 2016 let's think in 50 years it's going to be a 50 year old really nice well kept stingray yeah absolutely so. <laughs> it'll be, uh, how weird is that that then it'll be considered vintage that's when yeah. that's when we'll start feeling old is when yes our that instruments is <laughs> be considered vintage We're like hard oh, no yeah. <laughs> i am vintage <laughs> yeah uh, so yeah pretty pretty cool pretty cool they're they're like it's hump they're fender style humbuckers so they're like two mm. 
like it looks like two jazz single coils put together i had that pickup. on a modern jazz player and i loved yes. it i'm gutted ah. i sold that bass i'm gutted i sold it in lockdown don't know why i did oh, stupid really? i was gonna say <laughs> that there is the, the only other bass i've seen that on is those modern players yeah. um, and they are made in china i think those ones oh, I, I was either china china i cannot remember but it was my first full-size bass after my bronco bass and I had it for ages and then I got the stingray and kind of just left it in the mm. corner. And then in lockdown, I was like, mm, need a bit of money, sold it. And I wondered why it sold so quickly. Mm. And then like a couple of months later, I was like, hang on a minute. Shit. <laughs> why did I do that? That guy literally was celebrating when he got to my house to pick it up. Damn it. Yeah, <laughs> I want it happened. back. <laughs> honestly, honestly, that is the bane of my life since starting up YouTube stuff. I have to buy and sell so much to like, keep it sustainable and so yeah. that it means that i end up although i get to play a lot of new bases which is really cool um i also have to sell a lot to mm. fund more so at the minute i've got two jazz bases up here and i'm like i don't need two jazz bases i, I need to make room but i can't bring yeah. myself to sell them so it's yeah. yeah it's getting to that stage now where i'm outgrowing it um anyway meteora Sorry, we, pretty cool we digress <laughs> yes <laughs> Pretty cool. Uh, go and check it out. It, the news of that drops like the day, like the day after recording the last podcast. Really annoying. So, um, <laughs> so yeah, old news now. So we'll move on to what I think is probably the biggest news or people I know people listening to this will, will be big into is Sterling by Music Man. They have released a whole new range of bases. Well, I say that. Pretty sure they're the same bases, but just with new finishes, which is fine uh, by me. If it ain't yeah. broke, you know. If you ain't um, broke, don't don't try anything. But you know what? I've got a Sterling. What did I have? I had a Sterling five string. It was my first five string base, and I made it fretless in lockdown just for a bit of fun because I was like, I can't, I couldn't sell it. So I was like, oh, I should make it fretless. I love it. Yeah, those things They're are brilliant great. for the price. Like, because you think how much you pay for a Music Man Stingray, they are extortionately oh, expensive. Absolutely. In the, I mean, they're amazing, but they are expensive, and you get the same bass with a different label on it. I think. Yeah, ab absolutely. Like it, that whole country manufacturer argument. You know, it's mm. you, you're paying you're paying a lot for a name at the end of the day, and and for mm. where it's made in the world. Um, mm and you know the price of that labor um but i think the difference is the electronics yes and i think music man is a good example because the further up you go you, mm. the, the electronics do get significantly better i think yeah. so like in that sub series um i found that the electronics were, were good but then you get you start to just get even more low end and clarity mm. as you start going up you start um, climbing the ranks yeah exactly it's like yes. that new fretless of mine is a new i think actually it's the next bit so uh, oh yeah i i knew i was like this would be a good week to have you on now this <laughs> because i'm gonna words to say <laughs> i have i have it's actually the old range that i've got the one before but i mean it's basically just the same base different nice. um, finishes we'll come worthless. to it it's worthless <laughs> now that thing oh, yeah um, so yeah sterling i had the ray 24 ca um, which mm, was great. Nice. It's above the not quite the Ray Thirty Four series, which is what they've brought out now. We haven't even talked about what they brought out now. We're really good. Yeah. At this. <laughs> um, so let's let's go over it. They've brought out the new uh, the Ray Thirty Four. So this is their like higher end models. Um, mm. Over a thousand pounds. These are so you're kind of creeping up towards full music man price range. Mm. Uh, even though I think that's jumped up as well. But mm. these are all Indonesian made. They brought out new finishes in the just the standard H1 and the HH configuration. So the dual humbuckers. And oh my God, these finishes, they're all, or most of them are sparkle finishes, which oh. now I'm obsessed with. Um, I need a sparkly base. I haven't got yeah, one. Yeah, there's a purple one with all black hardware, uh, all roasted maple necks as well on these, of course, because that's, that's the end thing. Um, and I'm, I'm here for it. Uh, we've got a like a turquoise sparkle and a blue sparkle, and I think there's some more in there that uh, that they've mentioned but haven't put up on their website yet. It's really annoying because they've released some videos and give us like a little um, no, drip, sprinkle, drip, exactly <laughs> sprinkle finishes. They are not sparkles, sprinkles. <laughs> um, they've, they've sprinkled them out a little bit, teasing us uh, with these new finishes and. Every time you click the link in like the bio to go and look at them in more like better pictures, 
click it, it goes to the website and then it quickly redirects you to the home page. So, and they're not, so they're hidden pages, but they exist. Mm. And it's so annoying because I'm like, oh, it's working today. Ah, oh, no, I can't no. <laughs> redirect you back. So I'm, I'm fuming at the minute. Um, yeah, I, I've got big time gas for these and I'm, I'm hoping to, to pick one up because I've got a big stingray hole in you my have. life right now. So got enough jazz bases, but not enough. Uh, I haven't got enough, enough jazz that. bases. I'm the opposite. I need a few more fenders. I've only well, got let, one. Let, I say we do a swap. There you go. Sort yeah. it. We're both happy. All done. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, and the one that I, I do you know what I, I would, would love to swap, which would never happen in a million years, is uh, your Ernie Ball, is it the family reserve fretless that you've got? Yeah, so that, the story behind that is I was just coming out of the Bring It On contract and I thought, mm, I kind of need a fretless for musical theatre. And I was like, I don't want to get a custom build over water because they're so expensive, like for a custom build. I was like, I don't want to spend too much on a fretless because like I'm only going to use it for a few ballads every now and again. It's kind of like every now and again you use it for musical theatre. So I didn't want to be spending an absolute fortune and obviously wait time with customs. It's big. And I thought, hang on a minute. I love stingrays. And, you know, I've got the link with Music Man. So I messaged the guy and was like, do you have any fretlesses? And he was like, mm, no. I was like, okay, option two is in your UK distributor, do you have a really nice five string stingray that I could buy and then I'll make it fretless? And he was like, oh, potentially go to the shop in London, try them out, see if you like these new models. Blah, blah, blah. So I went to the shop, I tried out like fretted five string stingrays, the new model, I was like, yeah, brilliant, but I don't want it in like white or black because I've got white and black bases. And they were like, mm, the only ones we've got is white or black. And I was like, oh, no worries. So I was kind of was like, I let go of the idea of a fretless. Anyway, a few days later, he emails me and goes, you never guess what we've just found at the back of the factory in America. And I was like, what have you found? He was like, one of the old BFR ones. Like, There's only one of however many, 100 or 100, 200 or something. Like, we'll, we'll send it to you. And I was like, no, no way. I was like, what, like a complete fretless? He was like, yeah, the only problem is it isn't lined. And I was like, that's not a problem. I was like, hey, that's fine. It's got the most beautiful, have you seen it? The roasted, yeah, I'd say yeah. I'll plug my Instagram. If you look at my Instagram, you'll see the video of me unboxing it. So they, um, yeah, they sent it. And it is the and most, got two batteries. You know, they're worth a lot oh, of money, those things. And that is, those things, oh, it's beautiful. beautiful. And I literally can't wait to use it on a show because the electronics are just, it's got rear rooted at the back, so you can take the back plate off. It takes two batteries. <laughs> it's got a lot of power, and it's got really nice flats on it. They put really nice early ball flats on for me. I mean, I love that company. They are that the best. Base They're is just packing juice in there. Oh my god! That base. I want a fretted version of that exact base. <laughs> I'm like, how yeah. do I get a fretted version of this exact base? Because <laughs> wow, <laughs> they're gonna be like, God sake, we should have done that. Now Millie's on the blower. Yeah. Demanding a fretted version of it now. God. Yeah, why did we send her that one? So it's amazing. I, I'm so grateful for them. And yeah, brilliant. Mm. I like, that's, that's I can't an, wait to take awesome. it out and use it on a gig. I haven't used it yet on a gig. Um, so I'm like, come on, musical theatre chair with fretless bass. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> You'll start making suggestions. Like, maybe we should do this number. Yeah, this one here. So I can, oh, it needs a fretless. Oh. Yeah. Well, the problem well, is, is, they, is these days they don't want you to on a fretless tangent is obviously if you then play fretless that's another instrument so it could go from a doubling fee to a tripling fee so uh, there's sometimes fretless songs and i go mm, just do it on fretted because of the budgets yeah. and i'm like no but i just want to play my fretless like you don't have to pay me anymore but it's obviously union rates like yeah you know don't play a fretless and i'm like oh that's really interesting I, I never knew that that was a thing you know that like hmm. the amount of instruments that you need to bring i suppose you need to go and you might not have one of those like you say you i need a fretless that's why i kind of wanted fretless was a kind of a thing where i was like i don't want to have to buy it in a rush just before a contract Mm. and then learn it in a rush yeah yeah so i was like i just want to do it now and get out of the way so i've got it and i just know when someone goes give me a fretless yeah got it it's a beautiful Um, base i'll show it to you and fangirl over it with you because i love it so much um (laughs) but (laughs) <laughs> they're like you got a fret that if you didn't have it you'd have to get your double bass and like put on its side yeah exactly it's fine i've got one it's I'll done be emailing the early ball guys going help <laughs> <laughs> i've got a week <laughs> hook me up yeah nice. incredible well the reason that we're talking about the family yes, reserves is digress. because they have 
dropped new ones. some new ones. And I love and it when like they do this. there's like gold hardware and everything. Oh. I was looking at them like, mm, yeah, they're, they're can I have insane. another one? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And there is, like you said, there's such limited runs of these. This one, I mm. think there's only like 105 that they're making priced yeah. at $2,900. So it'll be fairly similar in pounds, to be honest. Um, and what's interesting Once about this one done, yeah. is that it's a short scale. Um, I think the the Stingray 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 short scales that they've done have been super popular. Um, and yeah, I really they've... want a short scale Stingray. Mm. That's on the shopping list and a Mustang. There we go. There we go. Very much on the on the short scale trend. Yeah, I, I think I want a Mustang soon as well. Um, yeah, I'm keeping my eye out on, my, on like marketplace and like reverb. Like, what is going out? Because hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and I, I've got a short scale, and, and that's the the Gretsch Electromatic. Yeah, about there. and that oh, that's so much fun. And that base is like 200 quid. You know, it's so yeah. cheap, but it's really good. or it's like Wilcox. I played one of them in it. Uh, we're digressing over. Really sorry, at the base gallery in Camden, and it's Ooh, like nice. they're handmade. It's like this guy put some and it, like have a look wilcox bases i think it's called and i played on their short scales and it was one of i played a 1980 fender mustang and that wilcox and that wilcox was nicer really i was no, like surprised i was like thing. vintage doesn't so, always mean it's going to be like mm, super nice i don't think it was if lovely it's not been look- yeah i would have loved both can't afford it <laughs> <laughs> can we strike a deal <laughs> somehow yeah, i'll take both price. nice nice <laughs> yeah um, so this short scale is um, called the Bombshell Bass, and it is like they just drop a bombshell, so I like the naming of that. Uh, <laughs> short scale, it's black finish, uh, taut pit guard, maple neck, matching black headstock. The only thing I don't really like about it is the red block inlays. I'm not, I'm not Ooh, I haven't seen way. it. Oh, I'm not a yeah. fan of matching headstocks. That's where I'm always a bit. I've never been a fan. Um, yeah. she says with her custom with a batch. I was going to say, I was like, wait a minute. It's, it's your yeah, that was actually a bit of accident, but I actually like it. It was like a happy I think accident. it really, it really suits that base, I think. It really suits um, it because it kind of, they sent the picture and I was like, oh my God. And then I was like, actually, I quite like it. Like, thank you for making the mistake. Yeah, like, it's because it matches like the hardware and like. Yeah, the, um, it looks very badass. Yeah, <laughs> badass is the right word. Yeah. Um, and this this stingray's got like a three way three way rotary switch on it. As well. that was hard Ooh. to say for some reason. It's got a three way rotary switch. Oh, so it's not the normal like. No. I so, can't do the hand. I really no one can see that. But the normal thing that it has, it's not that. <laughs> yeah. So, so it's got um. It's the the th- it's it's just like a normal knob, but it's twisted Ooh. three ways. Um. So it goes from series parallel and then to like a true single coil sound. Nice. So. I think for a short scale, that's pretty cool because you can get loads yeah. of different like, tubby sounds from that. So, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, really cool. Um, I, you know, I can't see myself getting one or splashing that kind of cash on that. Mm-hmm. But, you know, someone out there, this will be their dream base. So it's really cool. Nice. Um, so moving on with going through these so quick is uh, Court. Uh, Court have dropped some new bases. They've got the Elric NJS four and five strings. Um, insane looking like pimped out jazz basses essentially a bit yeah. of a different body shape headstock's a bit curvier massive loads of knobs on there. there's like five you know big preamp in there um bartolini pickups i don't really oh, know i love barts oh, oh, my overwater's got barts Bart in. really nice mm-hmm. what well, was there a decision there of like oh i'm gonna go with bartolini's or or were you just like bartolini's all the way I so I actually originally put no so yeah Bart's I kind of I was on the fence with the overwater owner or the Bart's and I went for the Bart's purely because I didn't want to miss my stingray punch mm-hmm. and so it's like the perfect in between because unpopular opinion I'm not a fan of Fender jazzes I that's why I've always loved stingrays because they have more punch and then the mm-hmm. Bart's were the perfect medium because they have the punch but the politeness that musical theatre needs and the no buzz. Yeah. So I love a Bartolini. I'll always go back to them. <laughs> nice. Yeah. I've, I've, uh, I've played a couple. I played a, um, the EHB Ibanez the other day with Bartolini's in it mm. and sounded cool. It was cool. So they're yeah. quite like, um, they remind me of like an Aguilar type sounds because they could be quite flat sounding, I think, which, you know, mm. 
is really good for for the type yeah. of thing that you're doing i think yeah um of course then they've paired also up got a lot kind of of, with yeah with the john east uni pre there's so much i can do with it that it's like i could do it like i could be in a metal band with that and it would be absolutely brilliant but then it also works for theater it's like what <laughs> yeah hello <laughs> very versatile <laughs> yeah, nice that's what you want that's what you want if you're going to get a custom base that's what you want yeah um oh, the <laughs> other courts that they've released oh my god um i saw a picture of these like a while ago uh but now they're out and ready sorry that was my my chair squeaking not anything else. <laughs> um they're the gb moderns four and five strings have you seen these no I have not seen these, but I'm going to look them up as soon as you we're need, done. You need, you need to, <laughs> to take a second and look at these um, because, my God, the finishes are unreal. Um, mm. We've got four and five string jazz basses. They are with um, Nordstrand pickups and a Mark bass preamp on these. Oh. Standard Ooh. roasted maple necks all day long <laughs> with really high spec quartz. These are they're just over a thousand pounds. Multiple like poplar burl walnut maple white ash paulo oh my god paul paul Ow, Nia. that's a wood apparently <laughs> um you know just this insane finish and these burly woods on these so really really cool high end bases and court hit me up i i definitely did not just say that i've got too many jazz bases okay i i need another yeah, one. i need it's, more <laughs> it's gonna be one of these all right <laughs> uh so yeah really cool um and i'm excited to see what uh how these go down because hopefully they'll be pretty cool um the last bit of news is uh boss the probably one of the most popular amps of the last couple of years um has been the katana series um mm-hmm. for those who don't know katana is a bit like it's, it's a powered amp but it's got all your kind of effects built in and uh different amp sims and things like that and so they've brought out the base version long overdue i think um mm. it comes in a 110 and a 210 as well um and i don't i haven't listened to it yet if i'm honest um and i'm not it's, it's exciting but much like you like i said earlier I'm not really that much of an amp person. I'm more of it. My mm. my order goes bases, then pedals, then amps of like yeah. my realms of excitement. Yeah, <laughs> so, uh, I'm probably the same. Yeah, so I'm <laughs> you know cool. I guess you know it's great, and I'm sure that these will sell really well. Um, mm. I'd love to try one because the katana, the bass, uh, the guitar. Yeah, I'd stuff, love to have like just a fiddle, go to a bass shop, and just sit there for half an hour. Probably annoy yeah. everyone, but have fun. And just see what it can do. That's exactly <laughs> what I did the other day when I said I tried that Ibanez because then I also tried um, uh, a Stingray special and and a, and a Sterling as well, the Ray Thirty Four. But this, the Stingray special was up on the on the wall for like two thousand seven hundred, and I was like, "Could I just play that one?" He was like, "Okay," I <laughs> got it down reluctantly off the wall. I was like, "Thank you." <laughs> and then you know on that if we might want the tangent but bet like shops i really struggle going in shops as a girl without sounding like a raging feminist yeah um i don't know if you have any female audience on your podcast but like i've always struggled going in because they're just the the men in there can just be so like oh do you know what you're doing i'm like leave me alone Uh, this is my job yeah i like the one time that i had an all right experience was in london because i walked in and i went I'm an early ball artist. I'm here to try some because they've sent me here to try them. And then immediately he left me alone and yeah. wasn't like dodgy. But normally I just get really looked down on. And it's like, well, no, I yeah, just because I'm a girl, come on. Like, such a, a, a backwards way of uh, awful stigma that you need to just like move away from and remove mm. from, you know. From any kind of yeah, part sorry, that of your was being. a tangent, <laughs> but I yeah, no. I hate going to base shops. I actually avoid it. A hundred percent. Yeah. I shouldn't. And I should be fine, but. I need to avoid them because I end up spending lots of money or just yeah, annoying people in, in trying as many bases as I can. <laughs> yeah, just uh, try one of my friends and go, I want that. <laughs> I'll have one of those, please. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Awesome. Well, it sucks that that's a thing and I hate that. Mm. And if you out there are listening and, and you've ever thought that, then unsubscribe. Go away. We don't want that. <laughs> Um, no, please subscribe. It's fine. Um, yeah, no, so, keep subscribing. <laughs> but just don't watch it. Don't watch it. Um, yeah. 
Anyway, let's move on from the news. That was so action-packed, and I love it. Moving on to our second question. (laughs) Question two comes from previous co-host, actually the first co-host that was on here, uh, my good friend Danny Higgins. Um, He said, modern bass and vintage amp or vintage bass and modern amp. Now, obviously, you're not so much of an amp person or even using an amp, but I suppose your amp is the most modern, if anything, because you're using mm. a digital modeler. Yeah. Um, I say vintage bass, modern amp, because I really want a vintage B bass so <laughs> bad. <laughs> yeah, that's, the, that's the holy grail, isn't it? Like, Yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. I... I kind of um denied about this a bit because there are pros and cons to both, of mm. course. But I think yeah. even in terms of reliability, I feel like a modern, I'd rather have a modern amp that mm. then can be fixed and replaced, isn't going to cost me an arm and a leg. Um, and kind of easier to maintain a bass, I think, rather than an yeah. amp. Um, so I think you'd be better off having the vintage bass, modern amp. And mm. there are certain things that, vintage bases have you know and like the way the wood cures and just the way that 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 sound oh, you know uh, and the, way the electronics are exactly yeah and they're just beautiful who looks at just a so pretty goes, oh that's a nice oh nice looking vintage amp yeah you whereas you if you're walking really with a vintage p base people are like oh hello <laughs> yeah exactly exactly I, yeah i never look at an amp and think oh i want to play that I, I look at a bass and go i want to pick that up right now yeah um yeah but but yeah, so I so I, I totally agree. Now, devil's advocate, of course, vintage bases, some things aren't so good. You know, obviously there's the mm. fact of taking it out on the road and risking all of that. Um, but then yeah. you could say the same about an amp, I guess. Mm. Um uh, I suppose the other things are like replacing parts can be a pain, or even like some little quality of life things that have changed, I suppose, over time. Mm. So let's say like a fifties vintage P base, um, with like your two saddles on the bridge for intonation. You can't it's we've kind of yeah. moved on a bit from that now with the four saddle yeah. bridges. So it's easier to intonate each string rather than kind of doing two at a time. Um so mm. little things like that I think is the benefit of having a modern base maybe. But mm. That being said, that's a very vintage base. There are still vintage bases, you know, because what are we considering vintage here, really? What, like 70s and earlier? I'd yeah, because what do you, because some people say that my Stingray's vintage, the 89, and I'd go, mm, yes, it's older than me, <laughs> but like, I wouldn't say yeah. it's quite vintage yet. Yeah, there's, there's like years? that, there's a, a, that middle zone, isn't there? Where it's, yeah, it's mm. old. It's an old girl, but. It's not, yeah. uh, it's not the old classic vintage mature cheddar yet. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it's just mild cheddar when it's at that yeah. bit. It's not quite mature cheddar yet. <laughs> We've come up with a whole new Love system that. here. Yeah. Um, yeah, awesome. I, I, I think we'll, we'll leave it there for the, for that question. It's a nice short yeah. answer. We got it. To the point. Damn. Let's move on to our next segment. So this segment is... I say it every time, it's probably my favourite segment that we do because it is breaking down a tone that our co-hosts, guests, whatever you want to call them, have brought along to uh, to show off or to showcase their kind of signature sound or something that they're just enjoying right now. And uh, mm-hmm. so you sent me a tone uh, leading up to this and it is, you know, I, I was expecting a certain thing and... Boy, did it deliver. And uh, and was it a stingray? Yes. <laughs> hey, hey, not... Oh, we haven't even played the clip yet. It's spoiling this. <laughs> Breaking the format. Let's have a listen to oh, it now. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay, Thank you. 
really tell me what uh, what kind of bass is that that we're that you're hearing? <laughs> I maybe spoiled it. So oh, wow. the animal spirits of Ulfak, that is the uh, four string stingray. Um, and then so like more modern bass and then the Shari Reed, which is that joy to the world, which was a beast to learn. But I like his vocabulary is amazing. I've wanted to learn it. That's my five string stingray. Um, so they're both Instagram videos um, one day, but they're all recorded audio literally straight into my interface. That's is that just a DI sound then? Straight into the interface, bit of compression on Logic, a tiny smidge of EQ. But other than that, I love it. Just plug in and play. Some people would like reel at that and be like, what are you doing? But maybe that's my thing. Just being simple and effective. Well, hopefully effective. <laughs> <laughs> well, certainly effective, I think. And I think that's something that you, I think you can get away with that a bit more if you're using an active bass, though, because those preamps, mm. you know, let's hear them. Let them, let them shine. Yeah. And uh, a bit like what we were saying earlier about having too, ma- too many uh, preamps and EQs in there. Sometimes you don't want to do that. And I think this mm. is a prime example of that because it sounds, you know, there's enough tonality in there. And it's not mm. this kind of raw sounds. Like if you're going to play with a pick on a P bass, maybe the DI sound isn't going to be yeah, a bit it's too much. Place. Yeah. And compression is a great tool to use in those instances, I suppose, because you're kind of leveling it all out, aren't you? Um, mm. and making it uh, or giving it a bit of a boost depending on how you're using your compressor um about compression um you know how how are you using that there do you kind of use a compressor as like an always on effect i know in those clips it is but are you engaging it for certain sections or are you just like yep leave it on done leave it on i've like got a really i've like made my own preset on logic um because i like i'm not that knowledge like i am knowledgeable i just did it by ear and then got my sound tech friend so i was like does that make logical sense mm. and so that is like my compression that i will always use and sometimes i edit it because sometimes like it doesn't sound quite right for the song it's slap you kind of want to give it a bit more and if it's like something else you maybe you want the dynamics in there um but yeah i've kind of like sussed out for instagram videos specifically the mm. sound that works because you have to think also with Instagram videos, people aren't consuming it through studio monitors. People are consuming it through a phone and it's got to poke out above the track. Yeah. So 90% of the time, that's what I'm thinking about. And that's such a, a modern way of thinking now, isn't it? Right, how yeah. is this, how am I, is my content creation going to come into this? So because mm. at the end of the day, you've got it's a, it's the biggest networking tool in the world, isn't it? You know? I've got all my work through it. I'm like every single thing. I did a flow chart with my mum. She's literally like my manager. She's amazing. Um, and we were trying to think, where did all my work come from? And every single time, even if it was like four things down, it always went back to Instagram. Wow. That's amazing. And so it works. <laughs> incredible. You've got to love algorithms sometimes. Yeah. Yes. That's awesome. Um, and uh, I love nerding out about that kind of thing. I'm um, like very slowly grow, uh, the trudge growing my audience, but you know, you're, you're doing fantastically well uh, at doing just that. And you know, it shines through in your quality of videos and the sound and the sound that we heard just there sounds absolutely <laughs> amazing. You. And that you're really thinking about how to, to use these tools in, in certain situations and specific situations mm. like, like content creation. So that's yeah. really cool to hear. Um, Awesome. Well, there's not much else to to talk about with that tone because it's so it, it's just the stingray sound, isn't it? It's all in yeah. one. And it's super, super <laughs> I love smooth. a stingray. <laughs> oh, it's, it's, it's one thing we know. She loves a stingray. You can't beat it. <laughs> no, no, I don't no. think anyway. <laughs> no, I think like my top. If I was on a desert island, I'd be I'd, I'd have a stingray, closely followed by a pea base. Yeah, I think mine would go stingray, my overwater, vintage pea base. I love the overwater is like in its own realm of type of bass. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's its own thing. <laughs> it is. It is <laughs> incredible. Awesome. Well, oh, be- oh, before we move on, what um people people will want to know probably what kind of strings are you using on there? Only four slinkies, all the time, all the time. So I have uh, the one hundred fives on my four string, and then the one hundred one thirties, so the green packet five strings on there all times i've just recently tried the cobalt oh yeah ernie balls i have i haven't actually done a video on them yet um that's something i need to do this week um and i love them on the four string oh nice they sound mega i've got got a setup up there actually um that i got a a recommendation from patrick hunter about those so they are they're going on the next one as well 
Yeah, they sent them to me recently, and yeah, I swear by Ernie Ball Slinkies, obviously. Um, I put the long scale ones on the overwater because they're strong through body, so I need the extra length. Uh, but yeah, Ernie Ball Slinkies all day, every day. <laughs> nice, yeah. I've been on a bit of a string journey recently. Um, I mm. went away because, you know, I was playing all these sweaty shows and going mm. going ham and going mad on stage and... um you know the strings are dying so quickly and i like yeah. that clangy attack that you can, yeah you know, that's you what i love you can sometimes get that a little bit from mm. uh from dialing in a bit of presence or treble but it's not quite the same um so i do like i do replace strings quite often um mm. and so i start i started looking at like oh, other string brands and what is actually going to be better for me and what's going to last longer because i found that my early balls I think the cold boats as long. do last and they're zingy as hell. Like they, when you start, it's like, ding, and you're like, yeah. yes, I love this. So definitely, I love like, a new yeah. string zing. Yeah, <laughs> amazing. Well, it sounds like they'll be perfect for me because, yeah, I, I, I my journey has brought me back to Ernie Ball because every time mm. I've picked up a bass now, and I've gone, oh, what strings are these? These are really nice. They've gone, well, Ernie Balls. I'm like, oh, like I've I've played these for years before, but I've been away for so long, and coming back, I was mm. like it's like coming back to even greener grass so uh, <laughs> yeah it's, it's cool um so yeah thank you so much for bringing on that tone it sounds so good it's so synonymous with you and your character and how you play as well i think it really, really really suits it and uh yeah sounds mm. awesome <laughs> let's move on to our final segment worn out from dancing <laughs> so now it's time for the big base debate i say debate it's, it's barely a debate <laughs> not even a debate um it's just a question that i thought hey this will make a good this will make a good topic um so this one comes in from dominic mason who has asked tips for a bassist going from playing in their room to playing gigs now, I thought this was a really interesting question. It's not something I'd really thought about for a long time because although I mm. primarily play in my room nowadays, um, I'm still, you know, well-versed in gigging a lot. And, and uh, yeah, they, they, I thought about it. I was like, yeah, well, they're totally different things, really. Um, mm. And, again, I think we can answer this in a couple of words. It depends. Mm. Uh, I think the tips, it depends on what kind of, gigging situation you're going into but then also what is your situation right now you know is this um playing in your room and now you're going to go and just you've been booked for a show and you're going to go and play a gig or are you p practicing with a band and going into mm. gigs um i i think i'm going to take this one back a little bit and say you know that this person is maybe uh playing playing in the room hasn't played with a band yet so we'll start there and then maybe mm. we'll see about going into gigs um so, yeah, I thought I thought this was a really interesting one because at the minute I've been getting a bit of fatigue of just playing in my room and wanting to play with more people. Yeah, and, and it's do more so people. it's so real. Yeah, and and I think you you forget the niceness of playing with musicians because, like for example, with theatre, you know, there's a lot of prep work before you go into a band call. For example, so like I've got something coming up in May. I'm going to go on holiday beginning of April and then for three weeks in April, I'm going to be sat in my room playing the same show on my own over and over again. And then you get to band calls and you're like, this is amazing. Yeah. But it gets, you get fatigued because you're just at home and you're like, oh, I just, oh, I just can't be bothered. And it's, you've got to push through that. The practice is so important in any sense. And you've got to like practice in situ. I think that's the main thing. If you know, you know, when you go to this first band rehearsal, you're going to be stood up practice standing up I, that was that was literally the first thing that i thought of when i saw yeah. this question if was, you know you're gonna be in high heels practicing high like, i'm not I'm doing practicing I, high I'm, heels. I'm always in high heels whenever I yeah exactly I always, i'm wearing them now <laughs> i've got to um yeah because you've got to try and simulate that as much as possible because actually mm. it's totally different even the height of your strap you know get used to that yeah um, yeah and all of that are you gonna use a pick are you not just make all those decisions before you walk into the first rehearsal room, what pedals are you going to use? What settings are you going to have them on? All of that kind of stuff. I learned do it before. Cause I used to never do that kind of stuff before. And then you get there and you're, 
like you know going in your pedals and going oh a bit more treble a bit more this a bit yeah, more that you, you start that looking like all the gear no idea then aren't you because you're like oh, yeah oh, that right <laughs> yeah so you definitely want to figure that stuff out beforehand I, I totally agree um then also i think what's so different from playing at home and playing in a band is that if you're like practicing say you're doing some covers practicing them at home you're going to it's going to sound different when you're playing it with mm. a band, you know, there's going to be certain areas that feel a bit more empty where there's no string section, you know, that would have been yeah. in the recording, or there's going to be sections where there's more things going on because there's two guitars now and there's only one in the recording, you know, all these mm. kinds of things. So you're going to have to um, kind of learn to adapt in a way. Uh, so a tip I'd say is maybe try playing along to uh, a drummer doing a cover or something like that online or mm. somebody playing it live and things like that so you get a different like timbre a different vibe like, exactly yeah. and because like drummers for instance you know obviously being bass players we our job is to lock in with them mm. and i find that relationship to be so important when you're playing you know i, I don't know if you find this when you're going in in different bands and, and meeting and playing with all different drummers that sometimes that communication can be quite different or it's oh it's so different yeah they're like different, different feel they place the one in a slightly different place even though you think that's ludicrous the one is the one but like <laughs> if you're working on click on a show they all place them in a slightly different place and you've got to place with them because at the end of the day if you're the debt you go in with them you yeah. play with them and you've got to get used to the way they play and they're all equally as amazing as each other and like you just have to place with them and as you say you work so together so even another tip would be if you're going into band rehearsal can you organize one with the drummer beforehand i would mm. if that's feasible great because idea yeah even I've always done that even communication mm. like visual cues you know you've got to kind of learn how each other works and i thought yeah well, even going back to like GCSE, right? So I thought it was really weird when we were doing like performance uh, GCSE and uh, there were a big part of it. They always kept banging on about communication. And I, and for a long time, I was like, what? I don't get it. I'll just turn up and play the songs, don't I? That's all I do. Yeah. Um, but actually they're talking about like visual cues, looking at each other, you know, knowing when it's mm. going to go in and l picking up on those things. And I find that different drummers do that differently. So you need yeah. to be on the ball with that, especially in like what you're doing as well. When, uh, you know, although you're following like a conductor as well. Well, even gotta, with conductors, each conductor, their one will be slightly different. Their one sometimes can be right there, or sometimes their one, no one they can't see what I'm doing, but you go down <laughs> and up again and it's slightly on the up. Or they want it to be really, they want you on the baton, or they want you slightly behind because you're the bassist. It completely depends on the, the nature of the show. If you're doing, you know, yeah. like Lem is, you're on it, don't sit back. But if you're doing a jazzy thing, almost you want to be pulling back from if they're conducting like properly with a stick. Or you've just got a pianist like trying to play piano and like ferociously nodding, and you've got to follow the ferocious nod. Yeah, so absolutely. you know, it's, especially when there's their ones especially when there's places. sections where you know, like you said, where there's loads of slashes where you can do whatever you mm. want in this bit, or like you can kind of go ham a little yeah. bit. Learning how somebody else plays as well uh, can really mm. impact that because you don't. Yeah want to all be doing something differently or, or want it to complement each other you know those kind of sections. yeah exactly so, yeah communi communication i think is a, is a good one try and learn more about that um other tips for somebody going from their room to playing gigs the first time i think be prepared for things to go yes. wrong um, yes take so, spares of everything, everything. Exactly. spare battery spare strings just literally spare cables galore it looks like you're taking loads just have it in a rucksack in the corner because believe me what you will never use it and then one day you'll use it yeah and, and be you know think about how what things can go wrong as well because i've had hmm. uh, uh you know i had an orange bass terror which is a class d amp so it had a um, valve preamp and one of the valves went just before when you know when we were sound checking i'm like no no app you know no sound so you know then i have to be prepared to see what other bass players there what amp can i borrow your head you know and and learn all those kinds of things or be prepared for those kind of things to happen mm. so that you're not floundering in the situation yeah. even if there's that's why I, when i'm building a pedal board now sometimes i try and build in like um almost like a an escape goat kind of thing to bypass something if a patch cable goes or something like that, or I've got some bad mm. power, you know, how am I going to adapt it to work in these different situations? So I think, yeah. uh, 
yeah, the, preparing yourself for those kinds of things is... And prepare uh, yourself yeah. for the people skills because I think that's what you can forget. In your first gig, you're very much like, you're just like a deer in headlights, everyone is. And you're like, wow, oh God, like just trying to make sure you play right. And yes, the playing is so important, but it's also how you behave throughout the day. So make yeah. sure you're just so chill, you know, just, yeah, cool. If someone asks you something, yeah, of course, like I'll do that or, you know, or... The, the sound guy's like, oh, I'm not quite like, can you give me more treble? Oh, of course, I'll give you more treble. Not, no, I don't yeah. want to give you more treble. Things like this, like always, or can you turn down? Just turn down. Don't do the thing where you turn around and pretend to. Just actually turn down. Yeah, they then like gradually your turn yourself up. During the yeah, show. they can always boost your monitors. Like always just the people skills. I think people forget how important that is. It's it's half. It's, it sounds ridiculous, but it's half the job. Yeah, absolutely. Even like you say, in that space leading up to it as well, because like in mm. f- from my experiences and doing uh, going on tour and things like that, there's so much downtime. My God, and that sounds great, but mm. my God, like you're just waiting around to to start yeah. to get in the venue or to do sound check or for the gig mm. to start. You know, so having those people skills can you know just help you so much. And on a networking level as well, you know, you never know what impression you you've got to be kind of malleable in those situations and be able to adapt yeah and it's uh yeah very important so any other tips that you can think of for um, someone going from room to gig i'm sure there's like so many after this i'm gonna be like oh yeah yeah course. i know it's basically in my head be prepared don't be a dick and you're normally <laughs> all right like if that you're nice can, to everyone be a challenge yeah and people do they find it a challenge and you think oh, well, that's the easiest bit and when you're in high stress situations you've just got to be like this is fine like I almost have the attitude of because I'm not the musical director or an actor on stage and theatre things I just go you know what if it all goes wrong I'm just the bassist I am literally just the bassist if it's not my fault I'm just going to sit back let them sort it out. If I can help in any way, I will. But if I can't, I'm just going to sit back and let the, the people who will sort it out, sort it out and not and not get involved. I'm just the basis. And that sounds silly, but I think that works extremely well when you are, you know, you know where you stand. Mm. If there's a sound problem, let the sound guy be stressed. If you can help, help. But if you can't, just l- let them let them solve it because that's their job. They're, they're professionals. They'll be fine. Yeah, 100%. It's also another thing. Yeah, and it's just being able to to know, you know, they know what they're talking about and they know what yeah. they're doing, especially when it comes yeah. to sound guys. Like, And mm. there will be times, there will be times we think, oh, it's one of these sound guys. Or like, oh, here yeah. we go, this guy. Well, I've know, had it as a girl where they've been like, so I had a problem with my bass once. The first time I used the overwater, there was a problem. And I was in this this venue and um, I had an amazing guitarist that I was playing with, like seasoned professional. I was learning so much from him. But the sound guy, when there was a problem with my bass, instead of speaking to me about it, he spoke to the guitarist about it. And it was like, hang on a minute, this is my, okay, <sighs> yes, the guitarist knows so much more than me. He's a seasoned, he's an amazing person. But talk to me, it's my instrument. I've got the problem. Let's solve it together. Even if then I turn around and ask to the guitarist, oh, by the way, like I'm unsure, what should I do? Should I put a noise gate on it? Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Don't speak. So, you know, sound guys, they can be those kind of sound guys, but you just have to, even there, I just was like, whatever. I just ignored the behavior. I was just like, you know what? At the end of the day, the guitarist is going to be able to solve this problem, not me. So let's just, let's just move on. Yeah. So Shocking. all swings and roundabouts. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're like, damn this guy. This guy does no stuff, but argh, still not okay. Yeah, I'm like, damn the sound guy. I love the guitarist. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I'm guessing he, I guess he got sorted then. <laughs> yeah, it did. It, it's, um, like, ama- like, and the sound guy was amazing in the end. Like, it was fine. It was just that tiny bit of behavior that you could be like, oi. But instead, yeah. I just went, only the bassist. Yeah. We're, we're meant to be the chill ones. Exactly. It's cool, man. Yeah, whatever. You know. I'm like, yeah, my base is basically broken, but like, whatever. It's fine. The show's in two hours. We've got loads of time. <laughs> I'll, ju- I'll just sing it into the mic. Woo, woo, woo. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> worst comes to worst. Awesome. Well, I think uh, I think we'll wrap it up there on on that uh, big base debate there. Um, so yeah, thank you so much, everyone, for all of your questions, and of course, the biggest thanks uh, goes 
goes to you, Milu. Thank you so much for oh, thank uh, you so much for having on. me. I've loved it. <laughs> it's been so much fun, and uh, who knows? You know, that's the, the thing about having different people each time or co-hosts and, and guests and things like that. You know, people can come back on. So if you ever want to come back on, just give us more a more than happy. Those. I would. <laughs> Marvelous, super. <laughs> um, so before we close things up. Where can people find you? What are you up to? Tell the people so they can go and check you out. So I do quite a lot on my Instagram. So it's Mealy Trail Base um, on Instagram. Um, do videos and stuff. I'm mainly up to theatre shenanigans in London, um, which is always good fun. I def quite a lot on the 6th in the West End. So um, drop me a message. Like I said, the dates that I'm on, you can come see me. Doing my best uh, ladies in waiting life in the full costume um but yeah no i just yeah instagram is where i'm at drop me a message anytime i love chatting based people so come hang Incredible. <laughs> yeah that, that's the best thing about the online like based community is just everyone's which is all big nerds basically that just yeah talk exactly all the everyone's time just friendly nerds <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's gonna that's gonna go in my bio now a friendly nerd <laughs> friendly based nerd love it yeah. <laughs> Incredible. Yeah. Well, thanks again, once again, for coming on. Guys, if you want to leave a comment down below, if you're watching this on YouTube or listening, should I say, um, or if you're listening on Spotify, Apple Music, Apple Music, Apple Podcasts, we're on there now, which is great news. I know a lot of you have been asking for that. So you're lucky buggers. It's on there now. Um, so yeah, leave us a, a review, preferably a five star one, because, you know, it helps with algorithms and all that jazz. Every time I say all that jazz, I have to stop myself from saying all that jazz bass because it's like it just sounds terrible and really cheesy. And I'm like, no, please don't don't go down that route. You're cheesy enough as it is, Johnny. Come on. <laughs> so leave your good reviews. Let me know. Like I said, reach out on Instagram at Johnny Dibble, the same as Mealy. I love talking bass to all you guys. And uh yeah, hit me up. Let's let's talk. Show me your rig. Show me what you got going on, ask any questions and ask questions for this podcast as well on my story polls on there. So yeah, all that good stuff, subscribe, blah, 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 blah. I really need to write a proper outro for this because I just go, whatever, that's fine. Do all that <laughs> stuff. You know what to do. You know what I mean. Get to the to point pod- though. So exactly. Fine. You guys have listened to enough podcasts. You know what to do. <laughs> Links in the description, etc. Once again, guys, thank you so much for listening. We'll see you next time. 